Okay, well, I guess I might as well start on time. Um, hopefully I finish on time. Um, yeah, my name is Chris Freed. Uh, I'm a Meta software engineer at Meta in ASIC firmware, technically ASIC platform software foundation. And thank you to my team who showed up. <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about using Thrift and Zephyr. Uh, so just a quick show of hands. How many people have used Thrift in the room? Anybody? I know you, I know you guys have. I already know you have. Cool. Very cool, thank you. I mean, did you use, have you used Thrift? No. Oh, okay, well, soon, soon, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so just a bit of background about myself. Uh, in Zephyr, in the Zephyr uh, community, I'm POSIX API maintainer, FPGA driver maintainer. Uh, I, I, there are more maintainers that I'm learning about. I, I forget about these sometimes, but like hash utilities, Thrift, collaborator in C++, C, GPIO, 802.15.4, TI simple link platforms. Mario's just shaking his head, he's like, you gotta do less. Uh, Mario's my manager, by the way, sorry. Um, he said he was gonna make jokes and make me laugh, so I hope so. Um, I, I've been a GSOC mentor, this is my second time, so I'm quite happy about that. I'll talk about GSOC a little bit more in, uh, in a bit, but um, also uh, I'm a TSE member because uh, Meta has you know, been really awesome to, to sponsor this event, so thanks a lot, Meta. Um, and of course, this is just a big word cloud of things I've done in the past. I have not modified this since last year, so if you saw it last year, it's the same thing. Um, and like before I get into technical details, I just wanted to say even more about myself, which is like probably oversharing, but you know. Um, so um, this Embrace Neurodiversity shirt which I wanted to wear, but I actually forgot to order because of stuff. Uh, it's just funny because, um, so I'm 42, ripe old age of 42, just found out I have ADHD, which everybody who knows me, they're probably thinking this explains so much. Yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like uh, at the same time, I just wanted to send out a message because this is a good platform to send out a message, especially to my own kids. Uh, you know, if you feel different, that's okay. Um, talk to the people who love you, talk to your doctor. Life is challenging, but at the same time, we have a superpower. It's called hyperfocus. That's how I got my slides done. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, there are a lot of people who are really successful in the world who have ADHD, so don't be afraid. Uh, and of course, these are the things we're gonna talk about today. I decided to keep it short and sweet. Uh, hopefully leave a bit of room for discussion, and hopefully I'm not talking too fast. So I'm gonna slow down a bit. But um, yeah, here we go. Uh, so obviously like what's Thrift? I mean, we've got a few people who've used it in the room, but I'll give a brief introduction to that. Um, a little bit about like how Thrift appeared in Zephyr, uh, GSOC's involvement in that. That's the Google Summer of Code for those of you who are unfamiliar. Um, and then just kind of a status update and kind of say, you know, what, what's left to do? Um, so yeah, here we are. And I'm not making money from these, but these are really cool stickers. Some of them are on my other laptop, but um, yeah, I'm, I, I love the swag. Uh, there's a few more spaces on my laptop, so if you have stickers, please feel free and I will put them on here. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Thrift uh, is a Roomba procedure call framework. Uh, I hope a lot of people understand what that means, but uh, if not, that's okay. Uh, it works on every operating system. Um, it's kind of framed sometimes, kind of buffered sometimes. Uh, it, you know, it does a few different things. Uh, it supports lots of different, what they call protocols, which I kind of prefer to uh, refer to as encodings. Uh, so like binary, com um, um, uh, compressed binary. I, I kind of like calling them encodings, but that's okay. Every, to each their own. Um, and then of course we've got, you know, the, the sort of other transports that they use like TLS uh, is one, Zlib is another one, uh, or Zlib, depending on your preference. And then of course we've got the client server code, which is generated. So it's a code generator. Uh, it's an interface description language, which sort of looks like software-y stuff. And uh, yeah, and then it, it sort of does your communication for you, which simplifies a lot of things. Um, so uh, a bit about remote procedure call frameworks because that's like super boring. I'm sorry I have to do this, but I just wanna make sure everybody has the same uh, platform to stand on. So um, 
as I said, uh, Thrift is a remote procedure call framework with an interface description language. Um, if you're as old as I am or possibly older, there's a very high likelihood that you remember a ASN1, which is abstract syntax notation one. It's an ITUT standard and then it became an ISO standard. Um, it's pretty highly used in telecommunications, but also elsewhere. Um, You'll find in things like, obviously, like radio links, television links, uh, modem signaling, uh, sometimes. Um, uh, sort of, they cover things, the ITU, for example, as well, will cover things like uh, UART encoding, so like HDLC, if you're familiar with that, um, and that sort of thing. Um, the, um, the I, I say this, and I really hope I don't offend anybody by saying this, but um, a lot of times people will say, well, I've only got like eight or 16 bits to transfer and I don't foresee that ever changing and I'll never, famous last words, who started a project and said, I'll never need to transfer more than like, you know, eight bytes of data to describe my system in entirety. You know, like never said no one ever, right? Well, maybe you said it, but uh, in a lot of cases it ends up being wrong, so. Um, that's what I refer to, like, you could do, like, bitwise information sharing where you're saying, you know, like, uh, I've only got these three states and I'm going to use a couple of bits to encode that. Um, but that's what I call bit-stuffed handwritten protocols. Uh, so um, that's the sort of thing where you want to avoid if you want to scale your communications protocol, right? So if, it's okay if, like, you do one thing and it's, like, it's only ever going to do the one thing ever. But if you're doing something like reading metrics from a device live, you're going to want to have rich, uh, a rich set of information, a rich set of uh, structures to work with. So, um, another thing about RPC is it often handles the, the errors that are normally involved with complex data transmission. So, uh, a lot of people have probably seen the, uh, someone try and essentially reinvent TCP using UDP. Um, that's like a classic example. Uh, they're saying like, oh. Oh, my, my, my link is perfect. I'm never going to lose any bits of information. Nothing's ever going to get corrupted. Uh, or whatever, I, I know that Ethernet has it, but um, sort of the same idea, like, I'll never lose a packet, you know? Uh, no, but you get, like, the retries, that sort of thing, kind of for free. And that's where a lot of people um, make the mistakes in boilerplate code. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyone with a communications background, I'm sure, right? Um, so obviously ASN1 is not the only thing. Uh, Sun RPC, does any, anyone remember Sun RPC? Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yes, I knew that, I knew that. Um, yeah, so um, it's been part of GLibc forever. It was invented by Sun Microsystems, not surprisingly. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it was essentially like a code generator, so you have RPC gen as well which takes some sort of input in. Actually, it's right here, so uh, I got my mouse handy. So this is a little snippet uh, uh, of uh, what you'd expect to feed into RPC gen. It looks like software, so it's an interface description language, but it's actually, uh, it generates your code for you. So, and here we would have uh, a procedure, um, and uh, the problem was with Sun RPC that, um, yeah, they, they required this nasty thing at the end here, which was the version. Um, and not everybody wants to version every single procedure by hand in their protocol, let's be honest. Um, the other thing that was difficult here is that you could, you could end up having to support multiple versions of your protocol simultaneously by hand, again, which is something we want to avoid because that's another pitfall. Um, and that's just kind of a nightmare. It's impossible to maintain. It's, pr it's prone to being broken. Um, so around the same time, uh, and I say this very lightly, and I, I, uh, it was around the same time as the downfall of Sun Microsystems. So, <laughs> I mean, I have tr an immense amount of respect for Sun Microsystems. Um, they, they had some of like, the most bright people on the planet. Uh, they, they contributed so much to open source, uh, but Somewhere along the lines, things got messed up. But um, things like protobufs, which actually preceded Thrift, um, it, which then later went into gRPC, uh, there was something internally, uh, obviously protobufs is from Google, 
There's something internally at Google called Stubby. Uh, that was an internal version of Proto, uh, sorry, gRPC. Um, but that was not open sourced. Um, Thrift came after uh, protobufs, so it kind of hit the world a bit earlier. Um, so the main concepts with protobufs were just get rid of message versions because they're prone to breaking things. Um, don't reuse tags. And uh, sorry, I forgot this bullet point, but by tags, I mean tag length value, which is just kind of like a, an intuitive way to encode things. You've got your tag, which identifies the object that you're trying to convey, like the, the, the it will either be like a, 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 you know, a field in your structure or something like that, or like a known uh, item. Uh, and then length, obviously, is the length in bytes, and then the value itself. So it could be UN64, it'll be eight bytes, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I missed this bullet point too, sorry, I'm gonna backtrack. Uh, some other things that use TLV, uh, netlink, which is pretty extensively used in the Linux kernel. Uh, if you've used any, if you've done any tooling for network interfaces in, in Linux, then you've used Netlink most likely, and you've had to hand code your uh, your uh, your RPC your RPC things uh, uh, functions, your client and your server. Uh, so Netlink is actually one of those weird ones where the code isn't generated for you, which is I find a little bit heartbreaking. But uh, what can you do? Um, another one is MISB, which stands for Motion Imagery Standards Board. So they also went with the whole like tag length value thing. Um, that's actually used in MPEG, believe it or not. So MISB standards, which is, which is like a military thing, is kind of built right into a lot of the video standards that we see today. Uh, I did MISB in Thrift, which was just kind of a, a mind blow for me. It wasn't the first time I heard of Thrift, but uh, I was able to get it done, and I was like, wow, this is really cool, and I really enjoyed hacking Thrift. So um, at that point, I kind of got a little bit more involved. Um, I missed the, the last one as well, apologies. Again, neurodiversity. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the nice things about protobufs, thrift, gRPC, and that sort of thing, is that uh, by following these very uh, simple rules, you actually get uh, guaranteed consistency of your protocol from one revision or commit to the next. And you can actually uh, verify that with fairly simple tooling. Um, so uh, let's move on. And I think I'm good for time, so. Uh, this, again, like I have tremendous respect for Sun Microsystems and any of my colleagues uh, and probably a lot of the audience is aware that at Facebook, uh, we, in <laughs> sorry, Meta, my mistake, my mistake. I started what it was Facebook, as, as did everybody else, but um, Meta. Meta sits uh, on the old Sun Microsystems campus, uh, which we call MPK. Um, and behind the, uh, see if I can get my mouse over here yet. Behind the, you know, the famous thumb, which is one hacker away, uh, we still actually keep the Sun Microsystems sign. And that's to, rem to remind us that even if you're giant and hugely successful, you still have to be able to um, support yourself, support your own ways, continue to innovate, uh, and be introspective and see where you've done things wrong and make better decisions. So a little bit about uh, thrift. Um, as I said, Facebook, Meta. <laughs> uh, it was created in 2006, 2007 um, and inspired by protocol buffers, of course. Um, it, was, it was open source almost immediately after that because internally they said, well, why would we just keep this to ourselves and just sit on it? Let's share this with the world, right? This is how tooling should be. We wanna make our lives easier. We wanna make everyone else's lives easier too. Um, Thrift is used ubiquitously everywhere within Meta, um, almost everywhere. Um, I'm not sure if, it's, if it reaches out onto the very, you know, leaf edges of everything, you know, but definitely within our infrastructure. Um, it's actually even been adopted by a number of companies, and I didn't want to write this down because I just found this information on the internet. <laughs> but uh, uh, just to name a few, like Uber, Slack, Venmo, Evernote, Twitter, Netflix, uh, and in terms of software that runs on your device, um, the one that I'm familiar with is GNU Radio. So they had uh, kind of pulled in uh, Thrift for a brief period of time for experimentation. 
it's been too long since I've done software defined radius, so I'm not even sure if it's still there, but uh, I found that very cool. So, um, uh, let's see. So, uh, obviously, like, we've got some pretty important things within uh, thrift in terms of primitives. You know, you get your standard bool, int8, int16, int32, uh, int64. Uh, but then we've also got these really incredible rich data structures. We've got lists, sets, vectors, maps, structures, enumerations, all the things that you would expect in a high level programming language. Uh, you can embed things within other things. You can have parameterized things. So, I mean, it goes on and on. It's really what you'd expect when you're conveying information from point A to point B. You want to encapsulate that in the, in the correct way. So this, this kind of allows you to do that. It, it's very similar to protocol buffers uh, in that sense. There are a couple of key differences, um, which I'll highlight in a few minutes. Um, of course, like we do like binary, compact binary, but also things like JSON. Uh, and in terms of like the actual transports, uh, uh, I, I guess they call them low-level transports. There's HTTP framing. Uh, if you've got a really big payload, then you can break that down into multiple sizes or chunks. So that's called framed uh, uh, transport. Uh, Zlib, which is really cool for you know uh, low bandwidth links like 802.15.4, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so one of the interesting differences between protobufs and uh, thrift is that in protobufs you I think you're limited to one argument to your uh, procedure, whereas in thrift you can actually add several arguments. Uh, this is kind of cool. We also can throw, which is a little bit different than protobufs. I think. Protobuf expects you to uh, return an integer that's possibly an error. Again, it's been a while since I used protocol buffers, but that's another slight difference. Uh, another big difference is that we actually build all of the tools that you need for your transport right into our libraries. So for the most part, you don't have to reinvent anything. Uh, it's been a while since I've done gRPC again, so apologies if that's not the case anymore. Um, but uh, from what I remember, the transport is kind of left up to the user. Um, just in terms of numbers, we support all the operating systems, 27 programming languages. I think there's like seven to 10 little of the transports now. And the list of higher level transports just grows. So um, I mean, the, the number of programming languages that we support is growing as well. It, it, I don't see it stopping. Um, so uh, as, I'm going to return to the bottom point here in a little bit, but um, Facebook, uh, we obviously donated Thrift to the Apache Software Foundation shortly after writing the white paper in 2007, uh, but then we forked it again. And you might just think, like, why did we fork it? <laughs> Forking's bad. Like, you, can't, you can never, no, no, you can never fork things. Like, there can never be too many forks. So uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, no, we forked it for a good reason, um, and that's a separate project called FB Thrift, which has this interesting logo on the side. Um, so up here, uh, we've got a little bit of a frame that you can look at. Oh, sorry, that's my screen. Uh, yeah, here's a bit of a frame to just kind of highlight how things are packed under the hood. And then here's like a little snippet of a, uh, of a dot .thrift file. So we've got enums, a struct, and a service. The service is, you know, your your service and your procedures live in the service. Um, so yeah, let's get into thrift inside of Zephyr. Again, like stickers, I'm making, not making money from any of this, but like, I think this one is my favorite. Does anybody remember like, like Z Boys, Zephyr Skateboard Company? Um, anyways, um, so yeah. Um, this is the actual official like Zephyr sticker, and if you don't have one, um, I can give you one, or Brett can. Uh, please take some. I just put this one up here because Thrift is one of those things that is awesome enough to have a uh, <laughs> to have like uh, a protocol dissector for Wireshark, so you can easily create a a PCAP out of it. And everybody loves PCAPs, right? So. Um, yeah. So. Um, I really wanted to do this all by myself, but I don't have infinite bandwidth. I know Fabio does. I don't know if he's in the room here. So that's why I was just trying to, in the last talk he had, <laughs> I was trying to give him some ideas, but 
Um, I don't have impotent bandwidth. So but I thought, hey, if I can't do this, maybe I can you know, mentor someone in the Google Summer of Code, and that's what I did. So um, uh, our contributor, Yang Mei, uh, who's originally from China, um, his GitHub is STD uh, Electronics. Um, he did he did the immense undertaking of porting this to Thrift. Uh, it was a huge job, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was stressful. Uh, I was co-maintainer along with Stefanos, who's our libc maintainer and our C++ maintainer. Uh, he's a really smart guy, very helpful. Um, so Young implemented a bunch of features. Obviously, the things that you know you kind of take for granted, like the binary protocol, uh, compressed protocol, that was pretty easy to implement. Zlib, does anybody, could anybody imagine Zlib fitting on to a microcontroller with 4K of RAM? And the actual Zlib? Oh wow, that's impressive. Wow, I'm gonna have to talk to you later. But we found it pretty much impossible, especially with, okay, here's a question, with a C++ application. Okay. Uh, so yeah, again, we chose the C++ uh, approach because it was probably the fastest to market, uh, so to speak. And because the uh, C implementation for Thrift uh, linked to glib, which is LGPL, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm gonna stop there. Uh, of course, Zephyr's Apache 2.0, so we wanna try and keep that aspect of it. Um, so in any case, uh, Young was clever enough. He did this all by himself. I'm honestly impressed he found this, uh, this, this, this library called uzlib, which was originally written by uh, Paul Sokolowski, or pfalcon on GitHub. Incidentally, the previous POSIX maintainer prior to me, uh, there was a bit of a gap, I'll go into that tomorrow. Um, and he kind of put it together with some other stuff and called it music with a Z. So kind of clever, uh, it fit, and that's all we cared about. <laughs> Uh, so what Zlib transport does is it basically compresses your payload so that you consume less bandwidth over, uh, uh, you know, band-limited radio links and that sort of thing, which is important for the IoT operating system. Um, and then, of course, uh, regular Thrift uses OpenSSL under the hood. So um, obviously we're not going to put OpenSSL on a microcontroller, and... Zephyr was great enough to already support embed TLS. And Zephyr's approach to embed TLS is a little bit different in that they have a special socket type. So you don't just get like um, AFINet or AFINet6, you'll actually, I think it's, or no, sorry, it's one of the domains. So I think it's, you'd have to go on GitHub and look. I, I can't remember everything, but it's like TLS something or other, something or other. Um, so it's a clever way to, uh, tell them that you want to use a, uh, uh, an encrypted channel. And it supports you know, one-way authentication and mutual authentication, so it's quite good. Um, Young somehow managed to get all the test suites to pass for every architecture. Uh, we don't do that on every commit. Obviously, we just run a couple of chosen ones. Um, and it's mainly in Kimu right now. Uh, we don't have any hardware hooked up upstream. Um, and of course, uh, how do you know that it works? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not gonna click on it right now, but there's this, uh, I, I invite everyone to click on this. This is just kind of a little uh, kitchen sink protocol called uh, thrifttest.thrift. So it includes everything, it exercises every code path, like enums, structs, nested structs, doubly nested structs, vectors, lists, uh, sets, and everything. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty far reaching. We get some good coverage. Uh, and of course, the test suite you'll find upstream in Zephyr's repository. And then finally, we've got a couple of samples where it's really cool because you can run the uh, server or client in, within Zephyr. And we're Kimi only right now, so you'd have to actually go through the process of creating your network uh, sockets uh, connected to Kimi. And then uh, whatever your host operating system is, you'll be able to run a C++ application, you could even run a C application or a Python application or a Rust application or, you know, there's an infinite number of possibilities. Uh, but yeah, that's all supported and uh, it's in the documentation upstream. 
Uh, and yeah, we, we made it to Zephyr 3.3.0, which was released at the beginning of the year in January. Uh, and I actually should highlight, this is without the uh, Zlib or Uzlib. And the, the reason for that is because Zephyr does not yet have a compression decompression subsystem. So for anyone out there who's interested in being a maintainer or contributor, uh, if you're interested in compression decompression, that's a really interesting area. And uh, I think Zephyr would benefit tremendously. So yeah, still experimental uh, because just because it's functional doesn't mean it'll work really well on every platform. Um, so, and then I'll get, uh, before I get to the next slide actually, I mean, there's the obvious, obvious question of like, um, what information can I send and receive in, in, in Thrift? And does anybody know the answer to that by any chance? Anybody? No? Okay, yeah, it's like anything, anything you can think of, anything you want to send. You can send strings, binary, or whatever, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you can conceive of, whatever your application demands, you can send and receive. And it's transport agnostic, so that's kind of nice. Um, I'm not gonna give away too many secrets, and um, you know, uh, I'm just gonna drop some hints here, but um, of course, Thrift is transport agnostic. How can I use it? Um, well, really, like, Anything that can be represented with a file descriptor is the easiest way to start. So like a socket, uh, if you're on like Linux, for example, uh, you can just use a file, a text file if you want. Uh, within Zephyr, we're basically limited to sockets at the moment. Um, socket pair is another one. Um, and of course, like in Linux, everything's a file, so the world's your oyster, but um, on the Linux side, you can think, well, what else can I represent as a file? And just dropping some hints, I'm not gonna elaborate on this, but uh, you know, like dev mem. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things you can do with an integer file descriptor that points at dev mem. Dev GPU, uh, sort of a similar situation. And uh, I don't know how many people are interested in uh, hardware acceleration, but um, the Linux uh, kernel upstream uh, just last year officially got a new major for the first time, and I don't even know how many years, like 10 years, something like that, not sure. But uh, yeah, DevXL uh, is the new one. So that's for hardware accelerators. Um, within uh, Thrift, of course, like we've got sockets, or sorry, within Zephyr, we've got sockets. Uh, but we've also got this interesting little wrapper around memory, which could be like DDR, it could be SRAM, it could be special like DMA memory, sort of like uh, um, tight coupled, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, in Zephyr, you may wonder, can I put an, in an integer file descriptor in front of something if I wrap it in the right thing? And the answer is yes. So uh, I'll invite everyone to visit this label uh, later, sorry. Uh, but the FD table, uh, 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 facility within Zephyr is kind of interesting. Uh, it gives you a bunch of things like a octal read write, which you'd expect from a normal uh, virtual uh, file system sort of thing. Uh, and that's how, if you've written a Linux driver, you're probably quite familiar with that. But we support something quite similar in Zephyr, and I can assure you it's actually trivial to implement. So um, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but. Uh, if you by chance happen to attend the keynote tomorrow morning uh, by my manager, Mario, right here, uh, from Meta. <laughs> He's like shrinking away. No, please attend. Uh, there's some interesting stuff that he'll announce. So, uh, and uh, we'll elaborate more from there. Um, and of course, well, shameless self-promotion. If you're here on Thursday as well, I'm doing a POSIX talk, so. Um, so, integration challenges. Oh, this didn't render properly. It did not. So uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start from here. But this is kind of the part that makes me sad. And you know, like, it's a fact of life. C++ can generate bloated binaries. That's not a surprise. Um, and of course, Zephyr's unfortunately got partial C++ support. So the whole roadmap is here. Uh, and I'm a collaborator, I'm really close with the maintainer. We're working very hard to improve everything. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that have been waiting for features for a long time. So, um, so for example, support for standard thread, uh, this thread, that sort of thing. 
uh, is lacking, and that's because it depends on actually p threads, believe it or not, POSIX threads, uh, with the 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 fastest, or I guess I should say the path of least resistance is through POSIX threads. Uh, that's just because we use the standard tool chain thing, uh, gthreadposix.h. Um, but as soon as you implement that, then you get uh, standard mutex, standard condition variable, uh, standard semaphore, stand, uh, binary semaphore, counting semaphores, uh, lock guards, all the really fun stuff. So, um, and then of course, the nice thing about that is that your applications just work when you bring them to Zephyr. Um, so yeah, uh, again, we need uh, gthread POSIX to be supported, and that falls on me because I'm the POSIX maintainer. Uh, and yeah, we've, I'm just listing the the um, the issues here for reference for anyone who's downloaded the slides. Um, so please take a look. Um, yeah, we basically want to get. POSIX threads working with a null uh, pthread attribute, because that would imply you automatically allocate your thread stack. And that's how a lot of these threading uh, things work outside of Zephyr. Inside of Zephyr, we usually just statically allocate our thread. I'm going to try to save like a few minutes at the end here, so we'll speed up. But um, yeah. This is really weird. That's, I, this is a really funny uh, story, by the way. The poo pineapple emoji. <laughs> um, my team, that's our, our team logo is the pineapple. So uh, whenever we see, some, see something good, it, we, we use the pineapple emoji. And I, I wanted the opposite of good, and this happened. I just I, I stumbled upon it. It was amazing. Um, so some more integration challenges. At this point, you're like, why did I come to this talk? No. I promise it gets better. <laughs> uh, yeah, so event FD had a major problem. Uh, I fixed it before 3.4, which was released by this gentleman right here, uh, Josh. Um, yeah, so at the same time, like I fixed, uh, or I improved performance of event FD by a factor of 10, which is awesome. Uh, that's what we love. Uh, yeah, so. Um, we used event FD inside of the FD server, which is necessary if you want to use integer file descriptors really well. Um, again, we don't have a compression decompression subsystem. Uh, the code size, again, the C++ is huge. That's not something you can get away with easily. Uh, and then I, I actually almost got this to fit on ESP32. But in, in any case, I was really happy that Young was able to get everything finished for GSOC. So uh, status update, and this is actually where it gets better. It's not all sad, sad news, so for those of you who walked out, bye. You missed out on the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Um, yeah, so here we go. Yeah, so uh, there's a whole other, t there are so many engineers at uh, Meta, and like, Way back in 2014, they're like, hey, let's fork thrift again because we like forks. But all these people are way smarter than me, and they could do stuff that I could not. So uh, this is way before I worked at Meta, too, as well. So um, they forked it, major enhancements to uh, the C++ implementation in thrift over the Apache version. Uh, it's fully asynchronous now. Uh, Major gains, and you can see down there in front of the numbers, but we switched to the Google test framework instead of boost, because boost is, let's get rid of that. Um, and then, of course, uh, standard coroutine, which was like wicked. And ironically, we don't actually need threads if we're using coroutines, so it's kind of funny. But um, you can imagine that that reduced the code size, reduced the runtime code size, uh, S, uh, RAM size, I should say, um, and sped things up significantly. Um, also, like a little bit of a memory footprint reduction in terms of strings because we're using standard string view and zero copy buffers, which is a really interesting feature of this library we have called Folly, which is also open source. So like, Meta loves open source. Um, even more improvements recently, and like this is huge. You can see this, millions of queries per second. Of course, like I'm just talking no op, but still that's pretty significant. Like major step up, major step up from the original not blocking server to the thrift team. So these people are way smarter than me, and I'm just saying, good work, guys. Um, beyond that, um, there's one thing that I'm, I actually, I hope I have enough time. Uh, yes, perfect timing, actually. This is like, this has never happened to me before, ever. 
where I've left five minutes for questions. So this is good. This is my last slide. Um, something I'm like incredibly proud to semi-announce because it's, it's almost done. Uh, and then this is something that I've been working on for about four years. I was doing it as a contractor before joining Meta. Uh, I've been doing it weekends and evenings now and then. I don't have a lot of bandwidth to dedicate to it, but it is like by far the thing that I wanted to contribute most to Zephyr ever. And uh, this is what I heard this morning. Um, Flavio from Intel, thanks. Uh, I'm going to thank a bunch of people, but Flavio and I uh, have been collaborating on dynamic thread stacks with Zephyr threads for the last couple of weeks, just because NOS happened to say, oh, Flavio would really think that, that is cool for the thing that we're working out on you guys to get work together, you know? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea if I can get someone else to fix my bugs. So uh, as it turns out, like I had this almost entirely working at the beginning of the year, and then I re-revved based on some uh, review feedback, and I broke it, and I didn't know how I broke it, and I didn't know, I didn't have enough bandwidth to go back and look at how I broke it. So within a couple of days, Flavio is like, uh, oh yeah, this is, this is your problem right here. I'm like, yep, that's it. <laughs> um, so he had it working just a couple of days ago um, with user space, uh, and this morning, literally this morning, he said, oh yeah, like just apply these fixes, rebase and all rebase and yada, yada, yada. I woke up this morning, he's like, it's all green. I'm like, what? So I mean, to me this is incredibly exciting and I hope everyone else feels this, this is really exciting too. Um, I wanted to also thank like Andy Ross, obviously Flavio, uh, Daniel Lung from Intel, uh, Andy's now at Google, uh, a lot of others, uh, Stefanos, very clearly, he's been a huge supporter, Keith Packer too really, really amazing people. And there's a whole bunch of people on GitHub who have been like providing really good encouragement and feedback and so forth, so on and so forth. Um, but to clearly spell it out, this is Kermit, by the way. I don't know, this is like, you know, it's, it's not easy being green as he would say. Uh, this is Kermit doing the Jeff where he's like, ah! <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, but uh, to clearly spell out what this means, it means that Zephyr can now actually get proper support for POSIX threads, can get proper support for C11 threads, according to the ISO standard, proper support for C++11 threads, according to the ISO standard, as well as virtually any other language, because I don't know what other things use other libraries, but that means like Rust, Lua, Python. So I hope Everyone agrees that this is very big, uh, and I cut into the question time, but that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, please. Oh, no questions. Okay, see you later. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thanks. Tom Hanna, Tom Pokemon Holdings. I have a question, please. I'm a bit confused. First of all, I really liked the numbers. It was a very interesting presentation. But sorry, I'm a stupid electrical engineer. Now, I'm an electrical engineer too. Can I? Okay, high five. In a sea of software, there are two of us. Well, to then, uh, sorry, then it makes me, I thought it's just me because I'm in the sea. Okay, either way, the question is now, if I want to, let's say, if my wife wants next week to start a new project using Zephyr, with a, would you already suggest her to use Drift or not yet? Um, so right now, as I said, it is experimental and we have an actual cake and fig symbol for that. It's not ready for prime time yet, I would say. It's probably more um, research oriented. If you wanted to like hack it and make it better, yes. If you wanted to like, I mean, you can, you can do thrift on your desktop for sure. You can do it on like your mobile phone. It happens all over the place. You can do it everywhere. Um, but within Zephyr, within uh, microcontrollers that just have like a few kilobytes of RAM, I mean, I don't know your wife. I'm sure she's very nice. Maybe she's working on cloud infrastructure with gigabytes of RAM, and in that case, sure. Um, no, no, I, this, I, I, the, the thing is with an, an, an embedded system. Embedded, yeah. So, so you say it is not, it is experimental, so it would require significant amounts of software competence, which we honestly don't have in the company. Yeah, yeah. so if you're running embedded Linux, then yes. yes. Yeah, of course, but on embedded Linux. No. On CFU, no. Yeah, so Linux, we're talking about megabytes, gigabytes of RAM, but Zephyr kilobytes, probably not. Thank you so much. No problem. 
Uh, over in the corner. Hi, I just had a question regarding the like this uh, thrift stack. Uh, w uh, can you explain yeah. any particular reason why uh, it requires threading, like a dedicated thread? Yes, absolutely. So. The original implementation, which was open source, is called Apache Thrift. So if you go to, it's actually on GitHub, you just go to HTTPS uh, github.org uh, or com or whatever it is, slash Apache slash Thrift, then you'll find Apache Thrift. Uh, we have our improved C++ version, which is under Facebook slash Thrift, um, or FB Thrift, I should say. Um, so the original implementation was very, uh, it just farmed everything off. As threads. If you want to do like asynchronous, then you required threads. Uh, I think there's an extra thread required even if you don't want to do asynchronous. And threads are very costly for an RTOS like Zephyr, where you're expected to run on tiny microcontrollers. But of course, uh, the improvements that we've made internally to FB Thrift are substantial. Coroutines, shared stack. It's amazing. And that's that was actually my very first question when I spoke to the uh, implementers who had done this work over the last. Uh, seven years. So, good question. Thank you. I'm interested in like a nice parallelization protocol. You know. Yeah. So like, okay, let's go with Thrift. It, like, I, I, like, I physically can't use Thrift in a blocking manner in my own threads. Then I have to have. Oh, you can. You totally can. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to run like a server and just yeah, have the code yeah, just yeah, work. Yeah, on so, I see, there seemed to be like a focus on. On threading and the, uh, on Zephyr specifically. Um, yeah, that's right. Because as a code generator, Zephyr gives you a bunch of code, and that code, the, like the Apache Thrift version of it, has threads built into it. So, like our um, Thrift server, T server, um, socket server, for example, has a couple of different threads, which are dirt cheap on Linux uh, or any other operating system with megabytes or gigabytes of RAM, but on a tiny microcontroller. Uh, so it was, it was possibly like a design choice made early on that worked, but as you know, we want to get thrift working all over the place uh, for little things with very little amounts of RAM, then it was probably not the right design choice for that. Um, but now we have FB thrift, which actually fixes that problem. So uh, does that help? No, not really. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's just a client implementation. I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand. Well, the client that. side, no problem. Like, if you're running, like, uh, are you talking? What operating system are you running on the client? It was Zephyr. Okay. I, I'm getting curious in, in Zephyr. Yeah, in that case, you don't have any problems. It's really the server that's going to be using the threads. So, yeah, no problems. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's sorry. Good. Thanks that for clarifying that. that. Uh, I was going to ask. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, do we have any other questions? One more. I think that might be, I don't know if we're at time or anything, like I actually didn't even see the. Uh, you mentioned uh, a few con uh, significant differences between Google RPC and, and Thrift. Uh, one of them is that Google RPC is basically from the green layer up in your presentation here. Yes, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, and another one is that uh, um, Thrift is using um, exceptions while Google RPC is explicitly not using exceptions. That's right. So in the C++ version, or in any language that supports exceptions, like as a first class citizen, uh, we enable that. But obviously in C, you can't do that. So the default C uh, generated code uh, links to glib, which has its own exception-ish mechanism. Um, sorry, I think I might have not let you finish there. Was there another component to that? Or? Yeah, from that perspective, if I compare the two, then I f think that Google RPC would be a better fit with, uh, with Zephyr than Thrift, maybe. From that perspective, yes. Uh, one of the features that I'd really like to see in Thrift is actually like an ISOC code generation target. And I was planning on working on that uh, years ago when I was working on the MISB thing, uh, mm -hmm. because for that exact purpose, uh, it was a safety critical system. You can't have exceptions. Uh, you really just have to rely on integers and errors and that sort of thing. So I'd personally like to see uh, C, ISO C as a code generation target. So um, would probably work for you too, I, I, I assume. Yeah, good. Any other questions? Okay.
Well, thanks so much for attending. I did not think this room was going to be so packed, so 